So in this video, I'm going to give a quick recap of shear force and bending moment diagrams. So we'll start with shear force diagrams, and the abbreviation is SFD. And what these diagrams do is they plot the variation in the internal shear force along a member. So if we pretend we have some kind of beam, and it's got whatever loading on it, and we're going to measure the distance along the beam as being x. To set up our shear force diagram, we have the x direction, and on the y axis, we measure the shear force. So depending on what uh, loads we see on this beam, you can get a shear force diagram, and I'm just going to make something up. could look like anything. And all this is plotting is where, how the shear force varies as you move across the beam. So bending moment diagrams, the abbreviation is BMD, and these ones plot the variation in the internal bending moment along the member. So again, to set it up, we've got the x direction, which tells us the distance along the beam. On the y axis, we plot the internal bending moment, and again, depending on the loading, you can get um, whatever you, you get on the, the bending moment diagram. Okay. So that's pretty much all there is um, for that bit. So I'll move on to the procedure that we can use to actually draw these. So the first thing that you always want to do is calculate what the reactions are. So this is just using your equilibrium equations to determine what the reactions are at the pin, the roller, the fixed joint, etc. Once you've done that, you've got a choice of two different methods. And the first one we're going to look at is the graphical method. Now this one tends to be uh, easier. Uh, when you have very simple loads on your, um, your beam or your structure. So the first thing that you want to do with the graphical method is jump straight in and start drawing your shear force diagram. So set it up with the axis that I had up here, where along the x-axis you're going to be having how it varies along the length of the beam, and the y-axis is the shear force. And for the graphical method, it's really just a case of following the forces up and down as you move across the beam. So it's going to be a couple of examples where I do this um, in practice. The next thing you do is jump straight into drawing the bending moment diagram. And this is related directly to the areas in the shear force diagram. And also if you have any couple moments applied, these are going to contribute to the bending moment diagram as well. So just a quick tip um, for when you're drawing these bending moment diagrams, you need to watch out which direction the couples are going to be plotted. So contrary to what we've been doing throughout the semester, and this is the only time it really applies, is if you have a clockwise uh, couple applied to your beam, you need to plot this as a positive on your bending moment diagram. Um, opposite case is when you have an anti-clockwise couple applied to your beam, you need to plot it as a negative on your diagram. So the positive one means it's going to push up on the diagram, negative means it's going to pull down. This um, phenomenon occurs simply because of the sign convention that you need to apply and also the fact that you're plotting the internal load, not the couple load. Okay, So again, there'll be a couple of examples um, where I do this in, um, yeah, in practice. All right, so there's a second method that you can use, and this one's a little bit more fundamental um, for drawing these diagrams, and it's known as the equation method. So back to our um, step process. Again, the first thing you needed to do was find the reactions, but if you choose to go to the equation method, we've got a slightly different procedure that you need to then um, implement. So with the equation method, it's all about cutting your beam. So you're going to need to cut it up into several different um, sections. Um, based on every time if the loads change, um, you're going to need to create a new section to perform a cut through. So when you put uh, when you cut it, what you need to go ahead and do is solve for the internal shear and bending moments. Um, as a function of the distance along the beam x. Um, remember that your internal shear and your bending moments are applied at the point where you, you've cut the beam. You need to replace the loads at that point. Um, once you've got these equations, it's just a matter of drawing the shear force and the bending moment diagram based on those equations. So again, there's a little bit of a tip here um, for when you need to go ahead and cut the beam. And it's again to do with the sign convention. So when you cut, you need to make sure that depending on which side you consider, so the left or the right hand side, you need to apply your um, shear force and your moment in the correct direction. So I've drawn a random beam here and I've taken a cut through it. So if I choose to then work on the left hand side, I need to make sure that I draw the shear force downwards at the cut and the moment anti-clockwise. 
If you choose to take the right hand side, you need to draw the shear force upwards and the moment clockwise. Again, this is going to make sure that you get the signs correct when you go ahead and draw the um, diagrams. Again, a couple of examples will be done to show you how to do this in practice. All right. So the very last thing I wanted to mention is a couple of tips with drawing these diagrams. So one thing that's super important is that the shear force and bending moments must start and end at zero. This is like a common sense check. So if you end up drawing your diagrams and they don't end up starting and ending at zero, you have absolutely made a mistake. Okay, so you can always double check that um, for correctness in your diagram. The other thing that we see is when our shear force goes to zero on the diagram, we observe a local minimum or maximum for the bending moment. And this is because our shear force is equal to the derivative of the moment with respect to, to the distance along the beam. So it's, yeah, basically doing some, some calculus. And that's exactly why, if you could rock back up to here when we were talking about the graphical method, we said that the bending moment diagram was basically the areas in the shear force diagram. So going from shear force to the bending moments is essentially taking the integral, you're taking the area under the curve. You've got this little couple thing as well, it's complicated a little bit, but that's essentially what you're doing. So that's all I've got for this video, and I'll see you in the examples for seeing how we do it in practice.